This is the great story of Lord Nishringadev. The story of his appearance, his annihilation of the demon Hiranyakashipu, and his saving of Pallad, his pure devotee. By hearing the transcendental pastimes and activities, the wonderful adventures of the Lord, one is assured of becoming free of all attachment and distress caused by contact with the material energy. Lord Krishna has unlimited forms, his abilities know no bounds, and through his own desire he chose to accept the form of Lord Nishringadev. This most fearsome form fills the devotees with spiritual pleasure and terrifies the demons. Once upon a time, in another age, there was a great and powerful demon. His name was Hiranyakashipu. In fact, he was the greatest demon of them all. Hiranyakashipu wanted to become immortal. He decided to leave his pregnant wife and go and perform penances and austerities for material benefit. He wanted to be free from old age, to become unconquerable, to be the only king of the entire universe. He went to the valley of Mandara Hill. He began his austerities by standing with his toes on the ground and keeping his arms upward and looking towards the sky. A bright light shone from his head, and then because of the severity of his austerities, fire came forth. The whole universe began to heat up. All directions were ablaze. The fearful demigods approached Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, and asked him to go and see Hiranyakashipu. Lord Brahma then went himself to the valley of Mandara Hill. Hiranyakashipu offered his obeisances, and Lord Brahma said, You have conquered me by the strength of your austerities. I shall give you a benediction. What is your desire? Hiranyakashipu replied, Please, let me not meet death from any of the living beings created by you. Grant me that I not die within any residence or outside any residence, during the day or at night, nor on the ground, nor in the sky. Grant me that I not be killed by any human being or animal, that I not be killed by any demigod or demon. I want to have no rival. Lord Brahma granted Hiranyakashipu his desire, and the torment of the universe began. Everyone, including the rulers of the various planets, were extremely distressed because of the severe punishment inflicted upon them by Hiranyakashipu. Finally, when they could find no other shelter, they surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. There appeared before them a transcendental sound vibration emanating from a personality not visible to material eyes. The voice was as grave as a cloud and was very encouraging, driving away all fear. Lord Vishnu said, O best of learned persons, do not fear. I wish all good fortune to you. Become my devotees by hearing and chanting about me and offering me prayers, for these are certainly meant to award benediction to all living entities. I know all about the activities of Hiranyakashipu and shall surely stop them very soon. Please wait patiently until that time. Lord Vishnu explained that Hiranyakashipu's last exploit would be to torment his exalted son. Then he would be killed. Hiranyakashipu's son, Pallad Maharaj, was born in a family of demons who was actually a great devotee. He was free from all material desires and his mind and senses were always controlled. He was never interested in usual childish things. His mind was constantly absorbed in thoughts of Lord Krishna. He would display ecstatic symptoms of devotion, sometimes crying, sometimes laughing, and singing loudly, he would imitate the pastimes of the Lord. Sometimes feeling the touch of the Lord's lotus hands, he became spiritually jubilant and remained silent, his hair standing on end, and tears gliding down from his half-closed eyes because of his love for the Lord. Shukacharya, Hiranyakashipu's spiritual master, had two sons named Sanda and Amarka, to whom Pallad was entrusted for his education. They tried to teach him worldly subjects like politics and economics, but Pallad was not interested. He continued to be a pure devotee. One day his father asked him the best thing he had learned, and Prahlad said, O king of the demons, as far as I have learned from my spiritual master, any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life 
is certainly embarrassed by anxiety because of having fallen in a dark well where there's no water but only suffering. One should give up this position and go to the forest. More clearly, one should go to Vrindavan where only Krishna consciousness is prevalent and thus take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hirani Kashipu laughed when he heard this message and instructed Prahlad's teachers to guard him carefully against any further Vaishnava influences. Sandanamarka quizzed Prahlad about who taught him, but he wouldn't tell them. He just said that Lord Vishnu had attracted him and there was nothing he could do to stop it. The teachers became angry and threatened Prahlad. They tried to teach him about the paths of religion, economic development, and sense gratification. After some time, they thought Prahlad had changed, so they presented him before his father. Hiranyakashipu asked his son, Please repeat to me whatever you think is the best of knowledge. Prahlad replied, Hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord one's best friend, and surrendering everything unto him. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. Hearing this, Hiranyakashipu became angry. He turned to Sanda and chastised him. Sanda defended himself. We taught Prahlad to the best of our ability. The devotional service has sprung up spontaneously in his heart. It's not our fault. Hiranyakashipu turned to Prahlad. You rascal, where have you learned this? Prahlad told his father that if one is too attached to material life, then one will miss the right path. Unless they smear their bodies with the dust of the lotus feet of a pure Vaishnava, they will never become free and will never become attached to the lotus feet of the Lord. Hiranyakashipu was furious. He threw Pallad to the ground and ordered his servants, kill him as soon as possible. The demoniac servants of Hiranyakashipu struck the tender parts of Pallad's body with their tridents. They shouted out, chop him, pierce him. Pallad was trampled by elephants, thrown amongst snakes, thrown from the top of a hill, poisoned, starved, exposed to extreme heat, cold and wind, and had stones sewed in him to crush him. Miraculously, because he was constantly fixed in meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Pallad wasn't harmed. Hiranyakashipu became fearful, thinking his son must be very powerful, even immortal. Sanda and Amartya persuaded Hiranyakashipu to let them try once more with Pallad's schooling. They convinced him that as soon as his son grew up, he would change and they would teach him how to be a royal king. This would never happen though. Whenever the teachers would leave the room, Prahlad would teach the other children about devotional service. He told them how he had received transcendental knowledge from Narada Muni whilst in his mother's womb. How his mother had been engaged in Narada Muni's service, and in return he had imparted transcendental knowledge to her, and thus also to Prahlad. Sanda Namarga found that all the children were becoming Krishna conscious. They went straight to Hiranyakashipu and complained. When he heard this, Hiranyakashipu became convinced he must kill his son. Pallad was brought before him. Hiranyakashipu said, O most impotent disruptor of the family, O lowest of mankind, you have violated my power to rule you, and therefore you are an obstinate fool. Today I shall send you to the place of Yamaraj. You rascal! You know that when I am angry, all the planets of the three worlds tremble? By whose power have you become so impudent that you appear fearless? Pallad Maharaj replied, My dear king, the source of my strength is also the source of yours. Whether moving or not moving, superior or inferior, everyone is controlled by the strength of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. My dear father, please give up your demoniac mentality and try to see everyone on the platform of equality. You should learn to control your senses, for these are your real enemies. Hirani Kashipu was furious. You are trying to minimize my value. You are being over-intelligent, and therefore I can understand you desire to die at my hands. You have always described a supreme being other than me, a supreme being who is above everything, who is the controller of everything, and is all-pervading. 
but where is he? If he is everywhere, why is he not present before me in this pillar? Because you are speaking so much nonsense, I shall now sever your head from your body. Now let me see your most worshipable God come to protect you. I want to see it. With that, Hiranyakashipu struck his fist against the pillar. Then, from within the pillar, came a fearful sound which appeared to crack the covering of the universe. To prove that the statement of his servant, Prahlad Maharaj, was substantial, the Supreme Personality of Godhead exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. The form was neither that of a man or a lion. The Lord's form was extremely fearsome because of his angry eyes, which resembled molten gold, his shining mane, which expanded the dimensions of his fearful face, his deadly teeth and his razor-sharp tongue, which moved about like a dueling sword. His ears were erect and motionless. His nostrils and gaping mouth appeared like caves of a mountain. His jaws parted fearfully, and his entire body touched the sky. His neck was very short and thick, his chest broad, his waist thin, and the hairs on his body as white as the rays of the moon. And his arms, which resembled flanks of soldiers, spread in all directions. Hiranyakashipu murmured to himself, Lord Vishnu, who possesses great mystic power, has made this plan to kill me. But what is the use of such an attempt? Who can fight with me? Thinking like this, and taking up his club, Hiranyakashipu attacked the Lord like an elephant. Just as a small insect falls into a fire and becomes invisible. When Hiranyakashipu attacked the Lord, who was full of effulgence, he also became invisible. In extreme anger, Hiranyakashipu attacked Lord Nishringadev with his club and began to beat him. Lord Nishringadev captured the great demon along with his club, just as Garuda might capture a great snake. When Lord Nishringadev gave Hiranyakashipu a chance to slip from his hand, the demigods, who were hiding behind the clouds, became frightened, thinking it to be inauspicious. When Hiranyakashipu was freed from the hands of Lord Nishringadev, he falsely thought that the Lord was afraid of his prowess. He took up his sword and shield and again attacked the Lord with great force. With the speed of a hawk, Hiranyakashipu moved sometimes in the sky and sometimes on the earth. His eyes closed because of fear of Nishringadev's laughter. Suddenly, as a snake captures a mouse, Lord Nishringadev captured Hiranyakashipu, who could not be pierced even by the thunderbolt of Lord Indra. As Hiranyakashipu moved his limbs here, there, and all around, very much afflicted at being captured, Lord Nishringadev placed the demon on his lap, supported him with his thighs, and in the doorway of the assembly hall, the Lord very easily tore the demon to pieces with the nails of his hands. Lord Nishingade's mouth and mane were sprinkled with drops of blood, and his fierce eyes, full of anger, were impossible to look at. Licking the edge of his mouth with his tongue, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Nishingade, decorated with a garland of intestines taken from Hiranyakashipu's abdomen, resembled a lion that had just killed an elephant. Lord Nishingade, who had many, many forms, first uprooted Hiranyakashipu's heart and then turned to the demon soldiers. They had come in thousands to fight him with raised weapons and were very faithful followers of Hiranyakashipu. But Lord Nishingadev killed all of them merely with the ends of his nails. The hair on Nishingadev's head shook the clouds and scattered them here and there. His glaring eyes stole the effulgence from the luminaries in the sky, and his breathing agitated the seas and oceans. Because of his roaring, all the elephants in the world began to cry in fear. Airplanes were thrown into outer space. Because of the pressure of the Lord's lotus feet, the earth appeared to slip from its position, and all the hills and mountains sprang up due to his intolerable force. The sky in all directions diminished in their illumination due to his effulgence. Manifesting a fearful countenance, Lord Nishingadev, being very angry and finding no contestant to face his power and opulence, then sat down in the assembly hall on the excellent throne of the king. Because of fear and obedience, no one could come forward to serve the Lord directly. When the wise of the demigods and the heavenly planets saw that the great demon Hiranyakashipu had been killed by the hands of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, their faces blossomed in great joy. 
They showered flowers onto Lord Nishringadev, just like rain. The airplanes of the demigods crowded the sky, and there was a wonderful sound of drums and kettle drums. Angelic women began to dance, while the chief of the Gandharvas sang sweetly. The demigods then began to approach Lord Nishringadev. Headed by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and King Indra, they all came forward. They offered their obeisances and prayers, their hands folded on their heads, though none of them could actually approach the Lord directly. He was still very angry at Hiranyakashipu, and they were afraid. Even the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, was too afraid to approach him. Then Lord Brahma asked Prahlad to go forward and appease the Lord. Although he was just a little boy, Prahlad approached the Lord and fell down at his lotus feet to offer his obeisances. Seeing his pure devotee acting like this, Lord Nishringadev became ecstatic in affection and raised Prahlad up onto his knee. Nishringadev put his hand on Prahlad's head, freeing him of any material contamination and desires. Prahlad's heart filled with love and his eyes with tears, and thus he was able to completely capture the Lord's lotus feet within the core of his heart. Prahlad Maharaj fixed his mind and sight upon Lord Nishringadev and with full attention in complete trance. Out of love and with a faltering voice, he began to offer prayers. How is it possible for me, who have been born in a family of Asuras, to offer suitable prayers to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead? The only way to satisfy you is through devotional service. Your appearance in this fearsome form is your pastime for your own pleasure. Such an incarnation is always meant for the protection and improvement of the universe. My dear Lord Nishingade, please cease your anger now that my father, the great demon, Hiranyakashipu, has been killed. All the world has achieved great satisfaction because of the death of this demon. Now they are confident of their happiness, and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear. My Lord, I am not at all afraid of your ferocious mouth and tongue, your eyes bright like the sun, or your shining eyebrows. I do not fear your sharp, pinching teeth, your garland of intestines, your mane soaked with blood, or your high, wedge-like ears. Nor do I fear your tumultuous roaring, which makes elephants flee to distant places, or your nails, which are meant to kill your enemies. I only wish that you place me under the shelter of your lotus feet. Thus Lord Srinidev was pacified by his devotee's prayers. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Nishringadev said, My dear Prahlad, O most gentle one, best of the family of the Asuras, all good fortune unto you. I am very much pleased with you. It is my pastime to fulfill the desires of all living beings, and therefore you may ask for me any benediction that you may desire to be fulfilled. My dear Prahlad, may you live a long time. One cannot appreciate or understand me without pleasing me, the one who has seen or pleased me has nothing more for which to lament for his own satisfaction. My dear Pallad, you are very fortunate. Please know from me that those who are very wise and highly elevated try to please me in all different modes of mellows, for I am the only person who can fulfill all the desires of everyone. Pallad Maharaj, however, did not want to accept any benediction from the Lord. He simply wanted to be able to serve the Lord. Eventually he asked for one thing, that his demoniac father be forgiven for all his offenses and sinful acts. Lord Nishringadev told Pala that Hiranyakashipu had already been liberated because of having a devotee son. He told Pala that he was the most perfect example of a devotee and that others should follow in his footsteps in order to attain the real goal of life. Thereafter, Lord Brahma came forward and thanked Lord Nishringadev for killing the great demon Hiranyakashipu. The Lord told Brahma that he should learn his lesson and not give benedictions so freely, for it could be dangerous. Being worshipped by Lord Brahma, Lord Nishringadev then disappeared from that place.